Right, hi you guys, Evil Softman here. Gonna do a reaction vid to last night's SummerSlam. Which is why there was no vid last night, because that's what I was watching. And, well, I thought it was a pretty damn decent pay-per-view overall, just for sake. And a lot of the matches were fairly decent. Um, it, I tried to do this before and I got bogged down trying to remember the matches in order. So I've got it kind of strained out of my head now, so this should be a lot quicker. I was about six minutes, I've only done two matches. Awful. But, alright. First match was... Oh god. I started it already. Oh, it was Rey Mysterio versus Dolph Ziggler. Now Dolph Ziggler seems to have come a long, long way from the Spirit Squad. He actually seems to be a fairly decent wrestler now. Able to at least cut promos, he's a lot better than he was in Raw, just going shaking everyone's hands. Hey, I'm Dolph Ziggler, I'm a twat. But, seems to be growing, and I think the Eric Continental title would do his character a world of good. He didn't win, but he definitely gave himself a good showing. And I don't know if this was just uh, Rey Mysterio carrying him, or it was more that Dolph Ziggler was a decent talent in his own. Whatever way, the crowd were definitely into it, and... There seemed to be some respect from the crowd anyway for his work ethic. So that would only be a good thing. The second match was MVP versus uh, Jack Swagger and the crowd was dead. After having such a loud reaction to the first match, just nothing. It just seems to show you that you really do have to have a story and a purpose and a drive with certain characters to get the uh, reaction and uh, Raw they've both been buried uh, MVP was having a much bigger reaction on Smackdown and as was Swagger on ECW it just seems that all they really care about is to push the main guys at the moment on Raw whereas Smackdown seems to want to push the, a lot of different feuds over the whole show which seems to work better which is why I only watch Smackdown now Alright, the third match was the tag team title match, which was Crime Time versus Y2J and Big Show. And at least they changed the theme tune to the Y2J thing. It seemed a bit different. It seemed to work a hell of a lot better than that awful clusterfuck music they've been putting on for the last few weeks, which is just awful to hear. Um, I really thought Crime Time was going to win the belts here. It just seems the way they've been pushing them that that was the way it was going but to maybe drag it out and really elevate them as a tag team might actually be a better idea so they didn't exactly win um, but definitely gave himself a good enough shot I thought the ending was quite abrupt it was just like showing that um, JTG was just to skip the walls of Jericho and it was like the whole crowd was behind him and then BAM and it was ended it was just like well he got the crowd to go all the way with him and then just say well screw you good healer thing to do but still I didn't exactly like that right the next match was another tag match which was uh, Legacy versus DX now I thought the DX entrance was just like hugely over extravagant it was like um, I didn't understand the whole US Army military theme that seems to be going with it this time round I know that Vincent Mann is very very pro military but it just seemed out of place for a counterculture group that DX was I'm not entirely keen on the kind of humor way they've gone with it now Whereas at the time, like the, when it was the original DX, and it was 97, and it was basically Sean Triple H just acting out to management because they knew they could get away with it because Sean was the biggest draw in the company. It was funny because they took risks and that, and it was all counterculture. And maybe I've just been so used to that that I don't exactly buy this new kind of DX for that. The match itself was really good because, well, let's face it, Shawn Michaels can put anyone over. You can think about him whatever he was or did about in his time in WWE, but he is one of the best wrestlers I've ever been. He could put over anybody. His 
ring acting, his actual technical ability is second to none even now, and very few people surpass him. Um, Triple H as well, when he wants to, can be quite good at that, and it was definitely apparent that they wanted to put Legacy over and get these guys a lot more respect in them than just being the lackeys for Orton. So that's always could be a good thing. It's like Legacy didn't win, but they didn't exactly lose because they gave a great a great showing, which is kind of like the definition of, of a good match. In the sense that as long as you're doing your job to make the other person look good, then people will still go and cheer or react for them. Even if they do lose, it doesn't exactly matter. Which is the definition of like a booking a good match. Right. Uh, so I've got this on Twitter, so it's in order. And I tweeted, I tweeted basically what I was thinking at the time. Oh yes, right. ECW title match. Uh, Christian versus William Regal. Yeah. Five second match. Was it even worth putting them on the pay-per-view? Seriously, that could have been left for like the pre-show or something. I don't know what they're doing with Christian. It just seems to be that they're punishing him for being on TNA and being so prominently champion on TNA when he moved there and it just seems that you can't have success and come back to WWE and be treated with any seemingly sort of respect even though you know he's quite good draw he still gets a good reaction from most people he is a brilliant promo man and he's a great wrestler and they just seem to like say all right Burry. But I don't know. It seems better to have a purpose for Kozlov as like a bodyguard as well. So that's not such a bad thing anyway. The way they're kind of building that heel group with him, Regal. Don't know who the other guy is because I don't really watch ECW. Right, 